Okay, this is Spreadsheet Standard 6. We're going to talk about the page layout and some of our print settings. To do this, I'm going to use this larger data set. Now, there are, of course, more than one way to do things. Uh, I'm going to first off look at some print settings, and we're going to try to fit them to a specified number of pages. We want to print all of this data on as few pages as we possibly can. So one of the easiest ways to do this is you go into your file, takes you backstage, and we're going to go to the print command. It'll tell us how many pages we're going to be using. In this case, 27 pages. That's way too many. So let's do a couple of things and see if we can't bring that number of pages down. Um, instead of printing at portrait orientation, I know that my data is kind of wide. Maybe I can switch it to landscape orientation. When I do that, well, I save three pages there. I can also do some scaling. I can scale it so I could try to fit everything on one page, but that's not going to work. I've got 400 and some lines. I could try to fit all of the columns on one page. So when I do this, if I fit all the columns on one page, you can see I'm down to just having eight pages. That's going to be kind of tiny writing, but that's okay. Um, let's go back to just no scaling here. One of the things I like about Excel is when I come out of it, this view, if I go back into my regular view, I can see where my page breaks are with this dotted line. So once I've done a print preview, I get this little dotted line between the cells here, or excuse me, the rows, that show me where it's going to print to. So that is, that's one of the ways we can do it. We could also go to our page layout tab. And in the page layout tab, we have the page set up. So we could adjust our margins if we wanted them to be tighter, so we could get more onto a page. We can just go into custom and we can make all of our margins half inch all the way around. Let's make that 0 0.5, 0 0.5, top's 0.5, and the bottom will be 0.5. If we only had a little bit of data, let's go into custom again. I could actually make it center itself horizontally and vertically on the page if I wanted to clean that up and make it uh, look a little bit better. Let's close this here. Let's click OK. Um, I can also go into my print area. Now I can select a portion of the page that I would like to select as my print area. So I'm going to select just this top uh, 15 rows here and go to my print area. And I'm going to set the print area. What that's going to do for me is when I go into my print options, let's go backstage, we'll go file, we'll go print. This is all I'm printing is just that first 15 rows. So let's scale it. Let's maybe fit it all the columns on one page. And so that print area helps me select just a small portion of what it is that I'm maybe I just need to show a sample to somebody of, of the kind of data that we have. Let's see. I can also adjust the width and the height of the printing here. So it's one page wide. The height will be automatic. I could make it two pages wide automatic height. Let's just go to one page. My grid lines and my headings, these are the sheet options. Now if I don't want to see these numbers, I'm going to just use the view commands. So if I turn off the grid lines in the view, you can see all of my grid lines have disappeared here. I put them back on. Let's turn the headings on and off. Okay, my columns, my labels, my letters and numbers have all disappeared. When we print, we don't typically see those. But if we turn those on here, when we go back into our print options, let's go file print, you can see I'm going to be getting all of the, uh, the borders here, and I'm going to be getting the labels on the rows and the columns. Now let's go back and let's reselect all of the data. I sent the print area to just be the first 15 rows previously, but I'm going to go back into my print area, and I'm going to clear this. That'll go back to our default state, which is to print any of the cells which have some sort of a text in them. So let's go to print titles. And here in our page setup, we have some options. We have the page area if we were going to select that there. We can also repeat certain rows at the top or columns on the left. And I could do more than one row, more than one column. But for now, I'm going to select rows to the top. And you see how it kind of minimizes itself. That's okay. It's trying to get out of our way a little bit. So I'm just going to select row number one here, pull my menu back down. And now when I print, it's going to put just that first row onto each page. So we're going to click OK, go back to our file, and we'll go back to our print. 
And you can see here's page one that has our headers. Let's go to the second page. There's our headers repeated again. So it's going to be throughout the whole document here that it's going to be repeating those headers. So it can help you as you go from page to page to understand what it is that you are looking at. The last thing I want to show you before we're done here is I want to show you how to get your workbook ready to, to send out. So I'm in the backstage view again. Let's inspect our workbook. So if I go to inspect the document, it's going to remind me, hey, it's going to probably make some changes. Do you want to save those? Yes, I do. And these are the things it's going to look for. It's going to look for any comments I have hidden, any hidden data, anything like that. So when I inspect it, here's what it finds. It finds that it's got the properties of the document, including my name, the dates it was worked on, and the path of the workbook. I may not want people to know my personal information, so I can just remove it. I also have some hidden rows and columns. And I remember in here, if you look, you can see between column D and column F, column E is hidden. That was a column where we gave the kids a chance to put a free form answer about what sorts of other social media type sites they were using. And of course, being junior high school kids, they uh, put some of the naughty sites. So if I remove that, it's going to uh, become unhidden. And for our purposes, I don't necessarily need to show you that data. So I can close it. And now my document is ready to go. One last thing, if I want to, if I've put a lot of work into it and made my formulas correct the way I want them to be, I can protect my workbook. Okay? And I can put a password on it and I can make it so that no one else can get in there and they can start to copy or mess with my formulas. So that is it for this section, folks. We are going to move on now to our performance objective.